Has anybody ever told you that all things happen for a reason? If so, have you never ever felt this to be quite a frustrating thought? I mean, some things just happen, they appear, and they seem very, very unfortunate, but with no real sense or meaning behind them. I myself has found myself in this particular situation quite early on in my life, as on this day today, March 19th, 20 years ago, I lost my sense of hearing due to a medical error. This is my year two diary. Um, it's all in English. I visited an international school in Germany. And um, our year two teacher, she asked us to journal every week on Friday afternoon and just jot down all our thoughts or feelings and just note it all down. My name is Julia. I'm seven years old. I'm in grade two S. I want to tell you something about hearing. When I was born, I was able to hear, just like you. When I was three weeks old, a doctor gave me wrong medicine. Then I was deaf. Now, let's rewind and see why I wrote all this back in 2009. So, following the diagnosis, um, second. I was rushed to the hospital as people thought I had an, I suffered from an ulcerous abscess just beneath my lower jaw. Um, we don't know what it was until today, nobody knows. Um, fact is, I got treated with the antibiotic gantamycin, which, if administered incorrectly, leads to deafness in children. So, in fact, I turned deaf. So now let's look at how normal people hear. Um, this is quite a nice diagram to look at. You can see um, the sound waves travel from the outside through the outer ear towards the inner ear. Then they vibrate this bony looking structure, the oscillary drums, which then emit the vibrations further on to the cochlea, which is a super tiny little organ, which looks like a snail kind of. And the, these contain tiny, tiny hair cells. You can actually see them in here. Um, the antibiotic destroyed these hair cells. They're supposed to um, transmit nervous impulses to the auditory nerve, where we then, within our brains, we um, convert these signals into sounds. The problem is, now that these hair cells are dead, um, they won't be ever able to signify these sounds. As a result, the cochlear implant steps in and bridges the, the gap which has been broken. The electrode cord bridges the damaged hair cells and um, converts these signals into sounds. So the way it works is that the sound enters through the microphone and gets transmitted through the coil, moves through the, basically it moves through the skin across the cable, throughout the cochlea, bridges the damaged hair cells, and that gets converted into electrical stimuli, which then move onto the brain. So, now that I fought to regain what I had lost, this turned into a seven year long court case. The hospital, or more specifically the doctor who administered the drug, um, did not plead guilty and fought against insurance coverage. Up until today, the court case is not covered and um, continues to carry on. This is a German article, which just briefly summarizes the case. Um, and it reads, the twittering of the birds during the morning hour, Mozart's kleine Nachtmusik, the sounds of the rustling in the wind, little Anna, which is a pseudonym for my name, will never hear it as it is. The five-year-old is deaf. The sounds she can perceive are attributed to a miracle of modern medicine, the cochlear implant. Using her cochlear implants, Anna can hear a small fraction of what she used to. Yet, it does not compare to the auditory range of a non-hearing impaired person. So, well, now I was able to hear something, but communication has always been my biggest constraint. Regardless of how lucky I was, it was now time to face the even greater obstacles of everyday life, especially when I'm among people my age. Children aren't always nice, and I, I just started to face all these questions. Where does the coil lead to? 
Do you have a computer chip implanted into your brain? And back then it hit me hard. I kept on wishing that this would have never ever happened to me. I wished I could press the reset button and just turn back time and wish that I had never been treated with gentamicine. What if it had been a different hospital, a different doctor, a different day? Well, I wished for something I could not have. I never asked myself the question, what can I do? Instead, I let this obstacle define me in virtually any aspect of my life. It is not that I could not see a way out, it is that I did not actively search for a way out. So I continued to build myself a very, very limited comfort zone. I wouldn't speak up when I didn't understand things. I wouldn't be willing to adapt in any certain kind of way because I did not want to be different from the other peers. Well, I found myself standing in between two doors. I wasn't able to decipher sign language because I didn't visit a school for deaf people. And I wasn't able to understand the people around me because I didn't hear as much as they did. So eventually I was standing between two doors but not able to enter either of them. Effectively, I woke up every single day thinking about what I would give up in order to turn back time. I was stuck thinking two words, two words which at the first glance seem harmless, but if you place them next to each other and repeat them in your head over and over again, become of destructive nature. What and if, what if? Instead of thinking, what can I do about this and asking myself this question, I was asking, what if? What if this had never happened? I can't hear. I don't know how it is to hear like a normal person. When I put them off, it is so silent. It is like nothing is happening. It is very hard for me when a lot of people are talking. Then I don't understand, and I don't understand a lot. Hearing is hard work for me. My biggest wish is to hear just like you. I cannot swim with my hearing aids. So I kept longing for something I could never have instead of facing reality and actively trying to overcome the struggles I faced. I've always wanted to swim, but I could simply not imagine myself in a swimming pool facing kids who I did not know and on top of that who I was not able to communicate with. So how could I ever face these struggles and join a swimming team? Well, I did not visualize any form of solution for my handicap to coexist with my plans for the future. The only solution I saw was the mythical cure to deafness, which until today does not exist. Here's what, we need to stop longing for the perfect and ideal version of whatever it is that we encounter. This is when a philosophical concept comes into play, Stoicism. It's not simply about unemotional and stubborn philosophers, but it is a way of thinking which we all can learn and take away from. The Stoic philosophers suggest that we should see life as a play. We should try to simply control whatever lies within our control and our sphere of influence, and we should face away from the things we cannot change. In fact, they suggest we should treat the cards we work with and play them as best as we possible can. We're all actors in this play. We haven't chosen our role, and we don't get to decide over everything that happens. So, for example, just imagine you receive a random set of playing cards. Some things are fixed. So maybe the country we were born in, uh, the family we're born into, um, our ethnicity, the sex we're um, assigned at birth. Rather than to fight all against all these things we cannot change, we need to redirect our focus and think about the things we can change, the things which lie within our sphere of influence. This is when I ask myself, what can I control? I cannot turn back time and change the fact that I was wrongfully treated with the antibiotic gentamicine. What I can change is my attitude towards the challenges I face. I began to realize this after I hit rock bottom. I realized that none of what I had been doing would help me move towards the life I wished to have. I learned that I was running in a circle over and over again, trying to reach for the things I could simply not have. It is still not known when or whether deafness will be cured, but what I know for sure is that I cannot put my life on hold until this day comes. So 
according to Stoics, this involves the decision, division between the things that lie within our control and the things that do not. Much of human unhappiness actually is due to the misclassification we believe that we can change things when in fact we don't and we spend too much time wondering and being sad about, well, something we just cannot do anything about. The philosopher Epictetus says that the things we can control, the things in our power, include our judgments, impulses and desires. The key idea here is to separate these two things. Sometimes bad things happen, yes, of course, but they're a course of life. Stoics do not suggest we should henceforth just turn our back to the things we cannot control. It is the art of developing the right attitude towards it and separating these two things. So here comes my attempt to entering a brave new world, this year's team of the TED Talk. So initially, making a change was hard. It was demanding effort and courage and most importantly, the action of stepping out of my very limited comfort zone. The beginning of me actively doing something against the struggles I faced since I was three weeks old. The most important thing to note though is that the brave new world is not a perfect world. Admittedly, it was tricky at first. I was trying to communicate, I was trying to do things I'd never done before. I learned to speak up and explain what the problem was and I learned to communicate my issues. So for example, when swimming, my teammates used to just play pantomime with me. Um, we would try to explain the formations I would swim in and what I learned is that humor is a great way to overcome struggles. So I felt that we were laughing together instead of them laughing about me, which changed a lot for me. Whenever I totally misunderstood something somebody signed, it would not be the others laughing about me in this case. And this made, much life, this made my everyday life so much easier. I had gained confidence in my abilities. Two and a half years later, I was a state certified lifeguard on duty. This is um, my teammate Felix and I, um, where we were practicing for the silver and gold life-saving badge. And the one on the right is my very first one. So Stoicism ultimately taught me is that we can grow from challenges once we learn to separate them and we learn to distinguish between what is within and what is not within our control. Now I view my handicap in a different light. I see obstacles which are to be overcome. I view them as challenges. I don't view them as walls. I'm still learning to grow from these day to day. But now I know I can change and I know I can adapt to develop the skills I need. These skills are not limited to the swimming pool, but they benefit me wherever I go. Although even today, I only perceive around 48% of the human frequency range, so I hear around like half of what you guys hear, I'm not constrained by what was initially termed a lifelong disability. So even though I ca carry this beautiful disability pass, stating the holder of this part is severely disabled, it no longer defines me. Asking myself, what can I do about this, has genuinely changed the way I live. This is German, and it reads um, that I am allowed to take somebody to take care of me, but I do not need that. And this is something I'm entirely grateful for. So now, having learned from Stoics, I realized that although deafness did limit my abilities when I was younger, I'm now more able. Simply, by looking at all the set of things I can control, I've significantly expanded it and begun my journey towards a brave new world. Thank you very much. <laughs>